after they finish? Uh, yeah, just you know, kind of start off. I mean, talk about a roller coaster season starting right now, losing four straight, then you know, capping things off with a win here, the Armed Forces Bowl. Just talk about just how good this win feels to you know, kind of end the season on. Yeah, I mean, it feels absolutely amazing. There's, I mean, if if we lost if we lost five straight to end the season, it, you know, it would have left a sour taste in our mouth. So uh, I'm glad we could get it, come out here and get it done. Um, you know, ending the season with a bowl win. Um, I said this earlier uh, this week, but I mean, you know, ending the season with a bowl win is, is something that we've done every single uh, year that all three of us have been here, and it's just a, you know, it's it's part of the tradition, you know, um, and it's it's good that we can end it off with a with a big win. Yeah, and and I'll add. I mean, we've all been here since 2019, and uh, I think today made 40 wins since 2019. I don't know if a lot of teams have done that. I think that's a big deal, and to be able to win four straight. Uh, bowl wins in our in our time here. You go cheese a bowl, first responder bowl, and back to back uh, armed forces bowl. It's just a big deal. And regardless of what happened in November and just not being able to finish the way we wanted to and being guys being banged up, we just want to close out with uh, with a big one and then be able to have that 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 stat, being able to graduate as seniors and and doing that. Yeah, Emmanuel, how big was it for you? First play of the game, break out for fifty yards and kind of establish up the middle. That you guys were able to do that. Yeah, you kind of get a good feel during the week of practice, and obviously you got a, a lot of a lot of time to prepare. You kind of get a feeling of how a game's going to go, what teams are, what their tendencies are, and stuff like that. And you can tell Coach uh, Coach Thiessen wanted to just really establish the fullback um, early, early and often. And I mean, yeah, that was, was a bit, that was a big one to start the game off. So it made me feel pretty good too watching that. <laughs> <laughs> and then to stand up there on the podium and receive that trophy. You know, what what does that mean to you? I mean, it means a lot. I mean, you always want to go out with a bang and finish out your career strong. I um, mean, just being the last time you were in the, uh, the Big Blue. Um, kind of had a lot of adversity over the last year. Um, just being able to just kind of come full circle and, and close out with a bang. You know, obviously I was in Ellsbo at, at one point and, and ended up coming back. Is he going to play? Is he not? And then coming back and just being able to finish out, finish out strong just, just means a lot. Their defense is one of the best at stopping the run, yet you guys continue to do your thing. Is there an extra pride involved when not only you're able to do what you did, but against one of the best run-stopping teams in the country? Yeah, I mean, from my understanding, they're, they're, they're one of the best. It's, it's not number one in terms of uh, yards allowed. I mean, bring the best and let, let's, let, let us show you what we got. We're just competitors that way. And the Diesels really just took that challenge and, and took it head on, really, and they just Open up lanes, lanes for me and, and the other guys that carry the rock today. And then, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we took it personal that they were number one, but uh, we we definitely took it personal that we weren't number one in rush yards on the year. So uh, it's a good way to wrap it up and and just do what we know how to do, and that's kind of how it goes every week. Where it depends, doesn't really matter what lines up on the other side. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to be us, and I'm proud of how we did that today. Is there something special here in the city of Dallas for you guys? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember ever losing in the state in, in, in Dallas. I don't know. Do you guys remember? I'm not no, sure. No. Yeah, I'm it's pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure we didn't lose in Dallas. 20 yeah, that's what I was like. Army. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. overtime loss. Yeah. Okay. Oh, shoot. But yeah, it's definitely it's special. Nice. It's special. I mean, especially being here, and, and I know we recruit out of Texas a lot, um, and being able to show out and just kind of um, show some guys kind of how how we play the game um, and, and show them what. What brand of football we play, and allow them to, to make a decision out of high school, um, and, and you know, kind of show them what we got. And you know, it's good. It's good to have them see us play, and then uh, the new generation will come in, and a lot of them will be from Texas. Bill, this is probably your best game in college. Like, what does it feel like to have that in your last game? Yeah, I mean, it feels amazing. Um, just to be able to to be able to go out. I mean. They were they were saying on the headsets Bo doesn't like sacks because I kept missing them in the first half so I decided I had to go out and get a couple, um, but yeah I mean it felt amazing it's, it's like like you said it's probably it's probably my best game so um, it felt it feels incredible to, to get a win and, and to you know say I played a part so. Um, you know it's it's been there all year I I like to think my efforts there but. Uh, <laughs> you know it, the opportunity presented itself so um, you know you get better as the year goes on. Um, and, you know, it's, it's nice knowing that, you know, I ended up on top and we ended up on top. Um, and, you know, you work on stuff all year long and, and, you know, especially with rushing the passer, even if you're putting, putting good moves out there, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to win every pass rush. You know, if you're winning 20% of pass rush, perhaps you're doing a great job. So, 
uh, being able to go out there and have it all come to fruition, you know, feels good in the last game. Well, Zach, had you not had today, what, you know, how much unfinished business would you have felt that this season had left for you? Yeah, I would have been sick, but I probably would have had it been in a wheelchair and not play today, at least start the game. So, but yeah, it's it's good to be able to come off of that those tough losses that the tough loss I played in last and be able to come back and try to lead the guys and felt good to be back out there. I almost wish the game goes to overtime so you can get a little bit more, <laughs> you know. But yeah, it felt great. You know, you look at group of five this season, you know, it was you guys, JMU and Liberty for the first eight weeks, you know, neck and neck with each other. All three were undefeated. Did you guys you know, pay attention at all to JMU leading up to the bowl game. What was your kind of reaction when you saw that matchup? Uh, it, it was. It, I felt honored to be able to play a ranked team. That's always nice because, uh, I mean, they vote on those guys and they deserve that spot. So it's good to be able to play a team that you know is of value and and has a good team out there. And um, I mean, you don't. I mean, you see the rankings every week in those first eight weeks, and you see those guys, and you know they're a good ball club. And um, I think it's cool that they got to be able to play in a bowl game. So that's pretty sweet. And. Uh, it was good to be able to play a worthy opponent. Well, one more for Emmanuel. I don't think we've – you've never really expanded on kind of what took place. You know, now that everything's kind of done, mm -hmm. like can you kind of take us through what happened after last season that did allow you to come back for this year and, you know, where you – Yeah, I just had a lot of personal stuff going on that I just needed to take care of and just take away – just to step away from, from school and take care of that. Um, I came back just in a, in a, in a better mindset. And then looking to play football again, and at first there was just some some hiccups along the road, and just kind of stay persistent and still try to give myself my, my best chance to be able to play again. And I'm I'm just blessed I got the opportunity to play again. And for any of you guys, at the end of the game, you guys followed JMU over while their alma mater plays, and you stand behind them, and then they they immediately followed you guys over for years. What do you think that just says about college football and what bowl games bring? I mean, it's just real sportsmanship. At the end of the day, you're just proud of. Being in that position, regardless of what happened, you worked your butt off all off season, all season to get to to get to, to a postseason, and not a lot of teams would say that they played in a postseason game. And just it's just just real sportsmanship, just love, and just yeah. W within sixty minutes, it's we're trying to we're trying to kick your butt, but like after that, it's all respect and all love, and just congratulations to the other man. Yeah, I mean, if you can't go out there and, and respect your opponent every Saturday, um, that just reflects poorly on you. And I think. Uh, you know, every every team I think in the country, um, you know, we, we belong here. We're we're like he was saying, we're sportsmen, um, and we all have respect for each other. We know, you know, the the ins and outs of of college athletics is not easy. So you know, you have respect for these guys that are, um, you know, grinding day in and day out like you. So if you can't if you can't go and show them all respect after the game, you know, what are you doing? Anybody else? All right, thank you, and we'll get to coach. Congratulations, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. All right, uh, Coach Garnhart, if you have an opening comment, then we'll open it up for questions. Yeah, um, just remarkable in terms of the quality of this bowl. Uh, Brant. Uh, the entire city of Fort Worth, and just the staff here, and uh, I mean, they absolutely do it first class. And uh, you know, really, the creativity that they have, uh, how much Fort Worth has to offer to truly make it a different experience from what these guys have have had in the past, and uh, just overwhelmed in that regard. Uh, as far as our guys, uh, I, I'll just tell you, I'm in complete awe of our guys, our players. Uh, our coaches, I don't, I mean, it's just, it's amazing what they do uh, as far as being able to handle that kind of academic load, uh, all their military demands, and and yet still they're able to play competitive football, and, and it, also just the leadership of this coaching staff, how talented they are, uh, the way that they continue to come up with ways for us to still be in some ball games, and uh, 
it's beyond description in so many ways. How nice was it to have all your chess pieces back? And what does it say about your training staff that these guys were able to come back and perform the way they did? Yeah, you know, it's um, candidly, I, I don't know what we would have done at quarterback, to be frank with. Well, I mean, I have somewhat of an idea, but I mean, we had a good number of guys that were out as we came down, even when we left Boise. And uh, yeah, to have those guys back, it matters. I mean, I think the hardest thing in an academy is depth. It just, it is, just because you don't have. You usually don't have first or second year guys, and you don't have the fifth year. And you're playing against guys that are in their fifth year or their sixth year. It's back in the 80s and the 90s when you used to play against BYU, and you just, golly, if it, there is a natural, as the season evolves, some, uh, some attrition that occurs. Open up the way you did on offense, you know, to have the, the big run up the middle. Kind of what does that do to, uh, to establish that and then unlock some of the other pieces? Well, I don't know if it necessarily establishes anything. It was one play, and it put some, it put maybe a little jolt and a little juice, um, maybe a little bit of belief, quite frankly. Yeah, it does. And um, that was a big play right out of the blocks. And uh, Bo Richter's performance was as maybe as good as I've seen from a defensive player since I've covered your teams. What, what do you have to say about what he was able to do? Yeah, I, I mean, let's be honest here. I mean, you look. Bo Richter, you know, if there wasn't if there wasn't COVID, Bo Richter wouldn't have played today. Let's be real here. And number four, if there wasn't that, number four wouldn't have played today. And uh, and you know, to have both those guys, I mean, to truly to be able to go against an opponent where they have that kind of seasoning, and Bo does, uh, for him to be able to have it also. I mean, just you know, I think so much of the power, the skill times where he could recognize instantly I can win on speed, the other times where there was a spin, or once in a while being able to get underneath a guy's chest, too, on a tackle. Uh, you have to trust your lower body, which he does, in addition to some of the other talents. Yeah, you look at the, I mean, roller coaster season you guys had, starting in and now losing four straight. What does it say about your team, your guys, to, to you know, come in here and be able to you know, finish the season on such a high note? Well, it's a reality, though, where we are a little bit, too. I mean, we're never <clears> – <throat> I don't think we're ever going to say, all right, hey, we're going to we're gonna win 30 straight or UCLA basketball if they won at 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, or the Yankees won at five years in a row. We're, I think we're pretty well aware of where we are and uh, the challenges that are a part of that. And um, that's every single day. And it's every single week, too. Did play some very good teams down the stretch uh, with some really, really capable players. And we did again today, too. We were just fortunate where it went really, really well today. Back to the pass rush real quick. You know, they started out pretty strong pass. I think it was 10 of 11 at one point. How much impact on the game did the pressure have just because? Yeah, it was... certainly did, right? At some point, I mean, naturally as a quarterback, you want to be able to take three in a reset and know it's, boom to boom, one to two in terms of your progression. And there's a rhythm that you want to have as a quarterback. And then all of a sudden things are a little closer to you or somebody's moving you off the spot. Now you've disintegrated that rhythm. And then, uh, I mean, to have the luxury of Brad Roberts last year and then come back and have a guy who can also carry 35 times in a bowl game, I mean, can you put it in context just how rare that is for the Air Force Academy to have that? And back yeah, I, it's not going to happen. I mean, it's – yeah, you put those two guys, like I said about UCLA, you can go through and the guys, Al Sender or Jabbar, there might be one year in there, Steve Patterson, but with Ricks and, you know, Wicks and Rowe, and then along comes this big head, redhead from Helix, Walton. I mean, it's – yeah, probably – they're probably can draw a few parallels that way. It, it's just not something that's realistic. We just happen to hit it to be real. Coach, for a coaching staff, how no penalties. Has that ever happened? I mean, that, that to me is one stat of just amazing. Um, I'm sure at some point, I mean, really, year in, year out, we're almost always one of the least penalized teams in the country. Uh, but again, I mean, a credit to our coaches. I mean, just in terms of the detail, they never let slide. I think the other part, just the discipline of our guys. You know, the focus. 
Uh, we practice really hard and really, really well this week. And, um, and, and candidly, it's a little bit of a roll of the dice because we send our guys home right after finals. They finish finals Wednesday night. We practice early Thursday morning. We said go home for four days. And uh, so there's a trade-off there. But I do think there's an energy and, um, and a group that you're dialed in. I, I think there's some residuals on the back end that are positive. Maybe one more. We got one more. A few decades now playing Power Five, Group of Five, you know, just all sorts of FPS opponents. What did you think of uh, James Madison and just their second year? Yeah, I, I, I tell you what, I mean, just the utmost respect, the talent level, how well coached they are. And uh, I, I mean, my goodness, they won 11 games and they deserve to be ranked 24th in the country. And how many of those games they were completely dominant? Uh, the investment as they move forward, you know, within that conference. Uh, they have a bunch of not good years, but great years in front of them, too. All right. Everybody good? Thank you, Coach. Yes, Congratulations. Sir, thank you.